This is not financial advice. I just hope a bunch of other miss baby because it's about to get hot in the kitchen. Now hit that like button and show your boy some love. Hit that notification bell to stay tuned. Let's get straight to the point. Subscribe to the channel. And the first banger on the list is none other than AMC Entertainment. Ticker symbol AMC. And at the time of this recording, AMC is $54 a share. It's currently up 14% on a day. It's currently up 70% on a week. And on a month, it's up over 480%. Now, you already know, we got in this back when it was $12 a share. And speaking of that, shout out to the Discord family, that options play that we running, it saw all the way up to 130 today. And even after this pullback, that option is still at 98% up so major salute to the discord family and if you want to be up on the play as early as we are hit that discord link in the top comment baby we're gonna welcome you with open arms and while you down there hit that weeble link and load up on some free stocks and get in the pre-market with us now what's going on with amc today listen to this so interactive brokers founder he said this he said don't short amc mean stocks they can soar to unimaginable highs. Now, why is this important? Because you have to think about this. Large players in the game, they are starting to say, guys who are short selling this, large institutions, everybody hedge funds, you step in on some toes and you about to pay the price. Now, what is he saying exactly? I want you to understand this. When you bet that a stock is gonna go up, guess what? You can be totally wrong but it can only go down to zero, so there's a floor. But what if you flipped it and you bet that the stock was gonna come down? And let's say you was wrong, how high up could it go? Theoretically, it could go to infinity, so you could lose an unimaginable amount of money. And that's what he's saying here. And then let's look at their three key points that they cited in this article. It says, short sellers should resist the temptation. So he's telling you the psychology of the large institutions, the billionaires, the people with billions and trillion dollar companies, how they're seeing this. They're seeing this as a temptation to short the stock because how high it is. Now, he said, short sellers should resist the temptation to bet against meme stocks like AMC Entertainment. And then they said this, the prices can go to unimaginable highs before they settle down at a reasonable valuation. And now he had a little insight for those of us who are invested into it and ready for the short squeeze. For those of you who are getting in for the first time, he said, however, investors should not be long on AMC stock either, AKA he don't think that it's gonna go all the way up to imaginable highs and then stay there. So now, I want you to consider what the big dogs is doing after hearing something like this because he's opening you up to the psychology of the large institutions and the billionaires that exist. Now, watch this. According to Bloomberg, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Citigroup, and Jeffries Financial Group have just adjusted their risk controls and their operations. They are getting ready for anything. They're ready for a squeeze. They're ready for AMC to go straight to the promised land. Let's keep reading on. It says they're trying to protect themselves. And this is a quote from Bloomberg. They are trying to protect themselves against the fallout from extreme surges, like shooting all the way up and then extreme dips coming all the way back down from there, including AMC Entertainment. So let's keep going on down this article. And then he said they did this specifically. The changes mean hedge funds and other institutional investors face higher collateral requirements and are limited from shorting the stock. Now notice I highlight this in red, because this is important right here. It says the changes in their policies at Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Jefferies, and Citigroup, all these places, the reason it's important is because the hedge funds and other large institutions who are betting against GameStop, they face higher collateral requirements. Now remember, we were talking about them getting margin called. So now when you get a margin call, it's basically you took out all kind of loans or you taking out debt so you can have stocks and this and that and the third, right? But you have to have collateral you have to have something like equity or money in your account and your account has to stay at a certain amount and if it falls below that amount guess what you get a margin call and then they're gonna sell all of your stocks to cover your position or if they don't sell all of your stocks they're pretty much gonna ask you for more money so you could cover it but guess what this article on Bloomberg is telling us now that limit that limit for them to get margin called is now even higher than it ever was what does that mean this increases the likelihood that a margin call could happen because they up the standards they up the standards for example let's say that just given little numbers here so you can understand and put this in your mind let's say that they say you know what you could borrow shares but you have to keep 60 dollars in your account 
you have to keep sixty dollars in your account. If it falls below that, guess what? We're gonna call you, and you're gonna have to send us some more money to get it back above that sixty dollar mark, or we're gonna sell all your shares and then cover it for yourself. But now they raised it and they say, you know what? Before it was 60, now it's 100. You got to keep it at 100. And if you can't keep it at 100, guess what? We're going to sell all of your shares or we're going to ask you for more money. Now, this is good for us in terms of a short squeeze because this increases the chance of a margin call happening, which would force all of these institutions to buy back all of the shares. Now, if they had to buy back all of these shares, this would make the short squeeze happen. That's what I'm talking about. Let's keep reading on. It says, Jeffrey's Prime Brokerage will no longer offer naked options in GameStop, AMC, and Microvision. And it says this, naked options allow investors to short a stock without owning the underlying security. So, Let's look at the Ortex data like we always do. And we're going to compare it to what we've seen in the past. So according to Ortex, two hours ago, they said this. They said that the short interest, remember, it used to be 18%. Then it came down to 17%. And now the short interest is now, according to them, 13.8% of the free float now this is only what has been reported officially this is not the whole story and they said that is 70.69 million shares being shorted if you see my last video yesterday you'll remember this short sellers have covered only 796,000 shares in the last 30 days so if we do the math and we say okay what have they covered and you think about okay they've covered 796,000 but they still have all of these other shares on loan that means they have to cover them eventually which was sending the stock flying let's do the math so you got 796,000 shares if you divide that by that 70 million that's still out on loan according to ortex guess what you get zero point zero one one two six aka they still have to buy back like we said before even when the numbers change they still have to buy back 99 percent of all of the shares that they have out on loan and there's very likely that there's way 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 more shares out being shorted than is even reported so Let's think about this so far. And just last week, we know they lost $2 billion. And that was the worst week ever for these particular short sellers. They lost all this money. But now, they are going through every single tactic that they could possibly find. Watch this. CNBC, they've been getting a lot of clout lately because of the thing with Melissa Lee when she came out and said the thing about the naked shorts. And then she publicly outed that, right? Watch this. CNBC, they know that everybody's paying attention to them now. And look at this. They said, forget AMC. Two traders share their own high risk, high reward stock bets. So now they're trying to refocus you to get you to say, okay, y'all listening to us? Guess what? We want you to pay attention to this. Forget AMC. And you might be asking yourself, why would CNBC be doing something like this now? So, you know, like we always do, let's get straight to the facts and let's break it down. So I looked into this and it says that what they're actually trying to get you to buy is NVIDIA. They said it's a solid company with great fundamentals. And it says this. I'm trading this in the options market and it's low risk and it's high reward. And then if you look at what they're talking about in terms of a high reward, it says it implies a 7% upside or even a 14% upside. So what they're trying to do is trick you to get you to think, okay, we all know that at these levels, you're not buying AMC for the fundamentals. You're buying it for the short squeeze. But now they're trying to tell you, look, NVIDIA is a low risk, high reward that you can play options on. And guess what? It got great fundamentals. We know all of that, right? But why y'all trying to refocus us off of this? So, you know, who is behind CNBC? Let's look into it. So let's break it down. Because remember, I told you about being three steps removed. Like Al Capone back in the day, they couldn't really get him because he wasn't the person selling moonshine. He hired a person who hired a person who hired a person that was selling moonshine. So then guess what? He wasn't really doing it technically. So let's look at who is behind AMC, not AMC, CNBC. Okay, CNBC is owned by NBC Universal, right? CNBC and NBC are both owned by Comcast. Okay, let's see where the rabbit hole takes us. They're both owned by Comcast. You look into Comcast and you go to fintel.io. Oh, look, institutional advisors or institutional investors, Citadel Advisors LLC and Ken Griffin, they have 
60 million dollars invested into comcast so do you think they have a say do you think they have some influence with all of that money invested into comcast now comcast is worth a lot of money but i'm sure 60 million dollars gets you some type of influence on a company you got to keep your eyes out for stuff like this make sure you're paying attention but guess what family the sec they said that they come in and they ready to crack down on all this illegal stuff they said this they said that they are now monitoring the ongoing volatility and vow to protect retail investors so remember they said something similar to this back when the gamestop thing happened earlier this year so we'll see what's going on with that but they said this a spokesperson from the sec they said they will protect retail investors if violations of federal security laws are found now how do they find it they'll find it if there are naked shares being shorted in the, in the market. Now, what is that? That means that there are shares that aren't supposed to really exist and they're being short sold into the market. How could they actually get caught? How could hedge funds get caught doing all of this? If they sell you a share that didn't exist, and then you sell it back, guess what? They can make it poof, disappear, and they get to keep your money. But guess what? If they sell you a naked share and then you hold it, and this share isn't supposed to exist, but you hold it, you legally own it, and you are entitled to what it is worth. And if you don't sell it back, then they can't make it disappear. And this is how the SEC can crack down if enough of us hold on to our shares. Only put into this what you're willing to lose, but I had to just leave you with that, family. And if you can't handle the heat of these hot stocks, then stay out of the kitchen and consider investing in index funds. I love y'all. Remember that. Take care.